Alrighty, we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, my name is James Shepard. I'd like to thank you so much for taking time to go through this demo. Um, I want to start it off with something a little bit different. Uh, I did the one this morning, of course, at 10 a.m., um, but I wanted to start this off with something a little bit different. So I literally just got off of a different uh, go to meeting event with a very experienced sales rep uh, that does consistently a couple hundred deals a year. And um, she had brought a statement to me that we were trying to work on with the tool. And, you know, this is just a random thing. I mean, this literally just happened like today. And I just, you know, saw the statement like 20 minutes ago. But I just thought I would share. I'm not going to obviously show you the statement. Uh, but I just thought I would just show you something real quick. So uh, once you log into the tool, <clears throat> I'm going to show you in a little bit about we're going to talk about training. We're going to talk about programs. We're going to talk about the quick analysis and the side by sides. We have four things to cover. But I just want to, by way of introduction, just show you what we did and, and what basically happened. So when you log into the tool, you're going to see this screen right here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just add this in and, and just show you something. So this is a pizza shop. We actually do have the statement. And so I'm going to click this little plus icon down here in the lower right. And this is a quick analysis. So you go to quick service restaurants. Uh, we're going to put the uh, name in here. I'll just call it test. Save and quote. <clears throat> and then we're going to name the statement. And this is the December 2017 statement. This pizza shop does $41,278.96. Their American Express volume is $1,699.87. They don't do any pin debit on here. Their average ticket size is 16.06, and their total current fees are. Let me scroll up here. Hold on one second. Total current fees are 12.09.20. So when you're doing a quick analysis, uh, whoops, I had a comment there. Here we go. So when you're doing a quick analysis, um, you just put this information in. That's it. You just put in the total volume. Uh, you can put, if they do American Express or Pin Debit, you put that in. You put the average ticket size in. If you want to put the total current fees in, we'll be able to calculate savings. So I'm going to click on Create. So I was on the phone or on this go to meeting with the rep, and we did this uh, process here, okay? And we click on uh, Present here. <laughs> and let's see here. Let me go down for one second. Oh, this is the, uh, the one with the lease here. That's why. So if we go to the Pricing Wizard. And we changed this. We were pricing them at 15 basis points and five cents. Uh, and 40 and 25. We didn't have this fee in here. We just had a $5 fee down here. All right. And so we're going to save this. And you can see right here that the annual savings comes up to $1,094.58. Now, in this case, she wasn't doing the $29.99 a month lease. This is a, a program we built a little bit ago. I'll show you in a minute. Um, but you know, without that, ended up ended up the savings was like about fourteen hundred bucks. Uh, it was actually thirteen hundred and sixty eight dollars that we came up with in savings for this particular merchant. And that was again, if you notice the process we just went through, I did not enter any. Uh, you know, I didn't enter anything about the interchange. I didn't enter anything at all about any of that stuff. We our system basically just went into our our uh, database of all the statements we have, pulled a bunch of them out of there, and in literally a minute or two there, I just ran a uh, you know a proposal. Um, for this pizza shop and I could just click PDF here and I could have a beautiful um, PDF proposal to email to the merchant that shows hey we can save you one thousand ninety four fifty eight now that by itself maybe you look at that and that doesn't seem that amazing to you but here's what seemed amazing to me so again the number we got when we ran it on this uh, with these other program that she was using um, the the pricing that she was using and stuff without that lease it was one thousand three hundred and sixty eight dollars a year in savings that we got at this point well, then what we did was we then I took the statement and we took literally like 20 minutes and I clicked on the side by side, create side by side. And again, I'm going to go through all this with you in a minute, but I went through and literally broke the statement down and literally like line by line to the penny what they're currently paying. And when we got back to the end of the process, the actual annual savings was $1,402. So the reason I bring that up is our tool right now, and again, we've made a lot of improvements. Some of you may have used it a year ago or, or you know, two years ago, but we've made a lot of improvements to the tool. And the accuracy is at the point where a pizza shop doing $41,000 a month in volume, our tool without any data other than the total volume, the average ticket, and the total current fees, we were able to predict the annual savings, the annual savings, to within 40 bucks. 
That's ridiculous. So, um, you know, I think I just wanted to start this particular demo off with a real demo of like, hey, I just got this statement a few minutes ago and this is what I did. Um, and so it's really an amazing tool. So let's back up for a minute and I wanna walk you through the tool and show you again four things. We're gonna start with training up here in the upper right and click on training. Then we're gonna talk about programs. We're gonna talk about the quick analysis and we're gonna talk about side-by-side -side, uh, comparison. So I'm gonna explain all that to you here in just a minute. If you have questions while we're going through this, just type them out over to the right in the question box or the chat box and I'll get to those here. We'll have several stopping points uh, along the way. So why would you want to go to instantquotetool.com and click on start your free trial and get 30 days free? What would the value be for you in doing that? Well, a couple things, number one, if you are new to the industry, you might wanna go there and start your 30-day trial, first of all, just for the training. So if you say, well, James, I'm not out in the field yet, I won't be out in the field for a couple weeks, okay. Well, you probably wanna take those couple weeks to learn how to sell merchant services, to understand merchant services. And so we have a bunch of courses in here and I wanna run through them real quickly with you, just kinda of give you, mention each one of them real quick. So at the top, we have the IQ Basic and the IQ Advanced Training. These are just simply training courses on how to use this particular tool, okay? Pretty straightforward there. Uh, you scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> now we have a bunch of courses that are for the uh, sales rep who's new to the industry. So some of you, maybe a month or two ago, you were selling cars or you were selling real estate or something like that. And you're like, man, this merchant services industry, I don't understand this, I need to really get into it. So you can watch uh, the course Intro to Credit Card Processing, Processing Equipment and Terminals, uh, you can go down here to how to read a credit card processing statement and how to sell merchant services. And so those four, uh, the intro to credit card processing, processing equipment and terminals, how to read a processing statement and how to sell merchant services. Those four are really going to be kind of your introduction to the merchant services industry. Okay. The other two right here are a little bit more advanced in merchant services. This one, if you have been in the industry for a long time or you feel like you really know what you're doing, but you want to like take your skill to the next level, the advanced statement analysis training, um, I've had people email me that said, James, I've been in the industry for 10 years and I didn't know a third of what you talk about in advanced statement analysis training. Um, it's, it's a really, it's a deep dive. It's two hours. I really go through how interchange works. I show you the interchange table. Oh, wait, look, good example. The sales rep Kelly that I was just talking to, um, she's been doing 200 deals a year for a while. I mean, this is extremely, extremely experienced rep. And she was still confused about the Durban Amendment and how it had regulated pin debit transactions versus signature debit. So we had a five minute discussion about that and she was like, wow, I never knew that. Thank you. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we cover um, in the advanced statement analysis training. And it really does hinder you in the field. Just having the self-confidence of really knowing what you're talking about. Um, I said it on the last demo and I'll say it again. I believe that if you invested two hours in the advanced statement analysis training and you're already in the industry making sales, I believe that within 60 days, you're gonna get $1,000 in value just from taking the two hours of time it takes to watch those videos. And the reason I say that is because your confidence, your self-confidence is gonna go up. You're gonna appear much more expertise. You're gonna identify savings opportunities on the statement that you never knew even existed. And so your closing rate is gonna go up. And that's extremely important. If your close rate goes up, your income goes up. Um, and so I think there's a lot of value in that. Also, some of you are, maybe you're already building a team, you're working for an ISO, or you're like, that would be cool. What's it like to build a team? You know, what does it take? Um, here it is, how to build and activate a sales team. Um, you know, building a sales team is hard. Activating a sales team where they're actually making sales is extremely difficult. And so this course will walk you through the different models, you know, a referral rep program or local sub agents or, you know, affiliate network, whatever it is, we'll walk through the different ways that you can do that in about 40 minutes and give you a really solid introduction to building a team. When you scroll down a little bit, um, you have sales 101. So this is like a basic kind of sales psychology, how sales works how to generate leads using Twitter, and then how to generate leads with LinkedIn. I'll give you a little tip though, the how to generate leads with LinkedIn, that one is just really powerful, much more even than Twitter, I think, uh, because it talks about getting referrals and leveraging your LinkedIn profile. It's really, a, it's a very valuable course, no matter, you know, whether, whatever industry you're in, that's just a really valuable course to go through. Now, the other thing I'm excited about is, uh, by the end of the day, Monday, there's gonna be, if you scroll down to the bottom here, there's actually gonna be uh, four new courses that we're gonna have up there uh, Monday by the end of the day. Uh, the first one is additional payment services. And so additional payment services is gonna talk about 
all the additional kind of ancillary things that you sell in this industry, whether it's gift cards, you know, what is American Express off the blue? You know, what is that? Uh, what's, you know, EMV and what, what's the big deal with that? What's Apple Pay? You know, how do cash advances work? You know, so it's kind of all these like other things that are not merchant services that you're going to get asked about when you're, you know, when you're talking to a merchant. And so that's an additional payment services course. Directing the sales flow is basically an advanced sales psychology course. So it's like sales 101 and then it's like this is the advanced version. Um, I have another course, My Day in the Field, where I go out in the field and sell merchant services and do some prospecting. And I have a, a camera in my van. Um, and when I get back in, there's a, a picture of me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, or a video of me talking about, hey, I was just walked into this business. Here's what happened. Um, then uh, the last one is generating sales leads from YouTube. Uh, that's a very powerful course for those of you that are, you're like, okay, I'm interested in online marketing and I want to do this to add on to what I'm doing out in the field or over the phone. I want to also do some online marketing. And you said, you know, what is your advice? Well, the idea of you ranking highly on Google uh, for merchant services, you can forget about that. Okay. I mean, unless you've got 40, 50 bucks a click to spend on Google AdWords, um, which is not really a good investment. Um, I, I think you're crazy to try to do that. But you would be shocked if you realized how easy it was to get high in the rankings on YouTube. Now you might wonder, well, who owns YouTube? Google does, okay? So guess what? When you rank really high on YouTube, then you can sneak your way into Google search results because they have a video results section usually. Um, and so that's really important. And so I talk about that with YouTube. So training, really valuable. Um, go and start your 30 day trial at instantquotetool.com if for no other reason, just to get our training. And we're going to keep adding more and more courses. Um, and so even if all you did was pay $29 a month to have access to our training courses that we put out here, um, yes, I put a lot of free stuff out there on YouTube, but there's a couple things that are lacking, um, with the YouTube courses or with the YouTube videos, they're not really courses. I don't really go through step-by-step -step processes with things and really dive deep. Um, and the other problem too, is it's just not organized. You know, you, you can't really go through my videos on YouTube. I mean, you can binge watch me, which, you know, good luck with that. I mean, I guess if you want to do that, I'm, I'm grateful, but you know, it's a little easier to actually have it organized into courses and topics that you can go through. And that's what we have here. And then of course, there's a lot of videos here that, I mean, really, I think all of the videos here, maybe there's a couple I put up on it publicly, but I think pretty much all the videos here are not public on YouTube. Um, so I, I, you know, obviously, I mean, I'm a businessman, I'm a capitalist. Uh, I save my best content to put behind the gateway that you pay. So, uh, and in this case, actually it's behind the gateway that's free for a month. So you can go and get a free trial and, and go through the training. So that's the training, okay? Next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the programs, okay? The programs. Now, this is a, a really interesting topic here. Let me uh, actually go back one second to our prospects here. Yes, all those training courses are covered by the monthly subscription fee. Uh, just, I'll give you guys a heads up. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it that way for very much longer. Um, at some point, I will probably charge uh, a one-time fee for each course. But at this point, it's included in the monthly subscription. And once you sign up for your monthly subscription, as long as you leave that active, you will have access no matter what. So if we change it down the road and we charge, you know, 60 bucks per course or something, you will not have to pay that for those courses because you already have access to them. So the answer to your question is at this time, yes, all everything is covered there. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's 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 all covered. But again, I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to be like that forever for sure. So. All right, so let me show you something here. So I want to talk to you about what a program is. Um, and so let's see here. So if you go to your uh, profile, so once you're logged in, if you click this little profile icon over here in the upper right and click on profile, you're going to see something up here called the program wizard. And the program wizard right here, this is where you can go to create your programs. Now I've got a couple in here from our demo that we did this morning, but we're gonna we're gonna create a couple of new ones. So um, when you click on the program wizard in the upper left here, um, you can you know create a new processor. So we'll call this one test two company, and that'll create a new processor, and then you can create a program for that processor right here. All right, and. Now, let me explain what a program is, and then I'm gonna explain why you really don't ever even need to mess with this. So, um, what a program is, a program basically contains three different things. The first thing it contains is the pricing that you wanna use by default. 
Now you can change pricing later as much as you want when you get to the end in the proposal. There's a pricing wizard, so you can go in there and change the pricing all you want. So it's not you know, life or death to get it exactly the way you want because you can change it later. But the idea is, you know, you probably have some default pricing. You know, most people you probably price at, you know, 40 basis points and eight cents or 30 basis points and six cents or whatever. You know, you have your your pricing uh, template that you kind of normally use, your same monthly fees, you know, or whatever. So it's a pricing template. Number two, it is a, your Schedule A costs. So many of you that are newer, you may not even know what your Schedule A costs are. You may not have a Schedule A. You have no idea what your Schedule A is. That's fine. But if you want to be able to, for our system to calculate residuals, we have to know what the Schedule A cost is. The way that residuals work is that you have pricing that you use, which is you're going to charge the merchant a certain price, which is going to collect revenue. Then you have a Schedule A, which has costs that's going to take away from that revenue. And then whatever's left over, well, that's the profit. And that's how we can calculate your residuals, is by knowing your costs, all right? So it has your pricing template, then it has your, uh, your costs, and then it has your compensation. So are, you know, is there an upfront bonus? Here's the upfront bonus. Is there a residual split? You know, here's the residual split. So it's got all that stuff there. And so it's got your pricing, your Schedule A costs, and your compensation all contained in one thing called a program. And the program is going to show up for a merchant uh, that meets these volume requirements. So you can make a different. You can make one program for merchants to do over thirty thousand, and you can make a different program for merchants to do under thirty thousand in volume a month. Now, here is the good news, though. I'm I'm going to take you through this in just a minute, and some of you might go through it and say, "Oh my, that's too complicated. I can never figure that out." Um, that's okay. You probably don't need to. Probably ninety five percent of you don't even need to ever go to this program wizard at all. Okay. Let me show you why, okay? This is a list of the Schedule A uh, that we, the Schedule A's that we already have in place. Now we have some test ones that we put in there by default for you, but we have Central Payments, NextGen, uh, World Bank Card, Elevon, Integrity Payment Systems, Beacon, PayProTech, First American Payments, Harbor Touch, North American Bank Card, Total Merchant Services, uh, MC, which neither I or Josh can remember which one that is. I need to look at that. Um, Ignite, which of course is now Card Connect. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to go down a little bit. Some more. There was a few others down here. Here's the new EPX platform with North American Bank Card, WorldPay. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think I missed the I missed Merchant Bank Card Network on here somewhere. Metro, um, Merchant Links, Capital Bank Card, Unified. Yeah, there's Merchant Bank Card Network, some more central payments. So I could go on and on here, okay? Here's the idea, all right? If you're selling for one of the main processors in the industry, which most of you are, the odds are we already have their Schedule A, okay? So all you need to do is email support at instantquotetool.com and say, hey, I just signed up for your new tool. And I want to know, uh, you know, if you can just add in, you know, I sell for Tesis Direct, I sell for Merchant Links and North American Bank Card. Can you just add those in? And again, 90% of the time, Josh, uh, our support person, Josh here that does this is going to say, sure, I'll add them right now. Like we already have it. And he may ask you some follow-up questions. You know, what's your residual split? Um, you know, how do you sell these? You know, he might want to help you to make sure if you're selling Clover that he can add a Clover with your lease price or whatever. And so I'll show you how to do some different custom fields and there's some, some things to customize it. But I mean, most of the complicated stuff is really with the schedule A and odds are we probably already have that in our system. So again, when you first sign up, one of the, the very first thing that you should do is you should just email Josh at uh, or I'm sorry, not Josh, email support at instantquotetool.com, support at instantquotetool.com, and just say, hey, I'm a new user. I'm selling for these three or four companies. Can you please add them to my system? And Josh will respond, and probably he'll be able to add at least one or two of those. And then he might say, you know what? Actually, we don't have that third one. Could you send me your Schedule A and your compensation, and I'll put something together for you. But we can do all of that for you. You do not need to do that. Okay. For those of you that are really experienced in the industry and you want to set up your own program so you know exactly how it's set up, I'm about to show you how to do that and you can absolutely do that. But for those of you that don't want to go through that complication, it's super easy to just email us and we will do it for you. Okay. Now, before I get into how to do this, let me answer some questions here. I saw we had a couple that uh, popped up, I think, while I was talking. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have Paprotech and the EPX platform. Uh, cash discount? Eh, don't have it yet. <laughs> so you can imagine with all my content about it, you know that I've already got that uh, in the works. Uh, it's actually done. It's just in the, the next release that we're going to do, which will probably be in 30 days or so. Um, and so we will have the cash discounting. Right now we still have surcharging because, you know, we built this tool a little while back when surcharging was all the rage. And now, of course, it's cash discounting. So uh, we're getting there. Uh, we, we have that coming really soon. Actually, the next version that comes out will have a lot of additional options uh, with, with the pricing stuff. But all right, so let's get back to the program. And let me just show you how to do this real quick. And then, of course, I'll take more questions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name our program. So we're going to call this one. Um, we're going to call this the test standard program. I don't know why, but we'll just call it that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our minimum and maximum volume. So let's say that this particular program um, only qualifies for merchants that do at least 3,000 in volume, but it's it doesn't have a maximum. So we check this. So that means no max. So it'll anybody 3,000 in volume and above, this program is for them. There's a $200 bonus, and let's say there's a 50% you know, residual split. So then we're going to enter our stuff here. So here's our main. This This page right here really is... 90% of the importance of everything else you do is really right here. So what is your per item fee? What is your minimum basis points of markup? Now, one thing you'll notice, this is all interchange plus pricing. Now, Josh can help you set up subscription rate pricing, but this is not flat rate pricing. This does not do tier pricing. All of that's coming with the next version. But right now, this is Interchange Plus because most of our subscribers just do Interchange Plus all the time anyway. Um, and so we're assuming you're doing Interchange Plus pricing here. So you put your pride and fee, your basis points of markup. So I'm going to make this one actually uh, low. Let's, let's actually call this the, um, we're going to call this high volume pricing. So we have something interesting to look at when we, in a little bit. So let's say it's 20 basis points and six cents. So we have one that's, this is our, our high volume pricing. And let's say our pride and cost is, you know, three cents and two basis points. So again, if you don't know what these are, this is from your Schedule A. It'll say authorization cost or authorization per item fee or something like that. And that's your per item cost. And here's your bin sponsorship fee, which is also going to be listed on your Schedule A. So over here, these are the fees you're collecting. And then over here is the cost. And what the difference between these, that's your profit that you're going to get residual on. Now, the terminal type and the terminal ownership, you really don't need to worry about that too much. The only reason we even have that there right now is that the next version that we're going to roll out will have some additional things you can do to really set up and track, you know, how many people did you sell a, a VX522 versus a Clover versus Point or whatever. And so we just have this here so we can make that, that transition a little bit easier. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and then let's go ahead actually, uh, let's take this up a little bit. Since we say this is for high volume, Let's say that's for 10000 and up. How about that? So we'll take that up a little bit. So then we're going to hit, uh, you know, again, you have, we'll say this is a loaner terminal. Well, let's say this is a, uh, let's say it's a rental. This is a rental. So we're going to do a uh, ICT220 rental. Now nah, I'll do Clover. So we're going to do a Clover rental. So we're going to hit next. Minimum monthly fees here. Uh, and we're going to put our minimum monthly fees in. And let's say, we're going to leave these, say it's nine ninety five monthly fee. But I'm actually going to zero this out because I don't want it to be called a monthly fee. I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to call it the software and technology fee, since we're doing Clover. So we're going to leave our monthly PCI fee in there with our cost from the Schedule A, our monthly debit fee in there with our uh, debit fee cost from the Schedule A. No annual fee. Hit next. The dues and assessments. Again, I'm not going to do a deep dive. We have tons of videos about this, but um, most of you are just going to hit next here. I will tell you that most of the processors you sell for do mark up the dues and assessments. Um, I actually only know of a couple <laughs> that don't, uh, that are large. And so most of them do. Um, and so, for instance, uh, North American Bank Card, if memory serves, I think that they're somewhere around three cents uh, on all of these. So they've got that marked up and then they're at like 16 basis points. So, you know, you can change that. But this is the true cost. And so we're just going to hit next. All right. And then we have our batch fee. That's the batch settlement fee. Um, and so I'm going to leave that at 15 cents. The minimum Amex per item fee. Oh, let's, let's add some pin debit. So this is, uh, we're going to say we're going to charge 15 cents per pin debit transaction and a five and a half cent cost on the Schedule A here. Minimum Amex basis points. Let's say 40. We're going to do 40 basis points of markup on American Express. And let's say there's 20 basis points of cost. No application fee, and now we're going to click Save. So again, some of you might look at that and be like, oh my goodness, James, that was way too complicated. I could never do that. I don't even know what half of that was. 
no problem, okay? Don't not use the tool because of that. Just email support at instantquotetool.com and say, I have no idea how James did all that, but I can tell you who I'm selling with. Can you please set this up and we'll take care of it for you. We'll, we'll work with you, even with your processor to get the information that we need to get, okay? So now we have that program. Now you can see down here, we have a different program that's from zero to $29.99. We have the standard program where we're, we're doing 40 basis points and eight cents. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna change this a little bit and I'm gonna delete this program that we have here. So we have a program here, we're gonna delete it. It's gonna ask if I wanna delete it. I'm gonna say I sure do. Now we have two programs. I'm gonna edit this program here and I'm gonna take this program all the way up to 9,999. Next, 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 save. So what did I do right there? Well, when you look at our programs here, you'll now see that we have one program that's gonna show up for any merchant that does zero to 9,999 in volume. We have a different program that's gonna show up when we do 10,000 or more. So never more than one program is actually gonna show up. Now that's not a good thing. I mean, most of you, if you sell for multiple processors, you may wanna have two or three different programs show up. You know, the, the North American bank card pay anywhere program and the whatever, the you know point terminal on this, you know, so you may have different options and you're gonna weigh your options. That's the beauty of our program. But in this case, I'm just showing you how it works that there's, we only have two programs here, okay? So that is a program. Now we're gonna to go to the prospect and we're gonna create a proposal that's gonna run against the, the programs that we just created here, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to prospect. So now we're moving on. We talked about training. We now talked about programs and the biggest takeaway from programs again is, you know, if it, if it looks confusing to you at all, the odds are if you're selling for somebody and we don't have their Schedule A already, that's probably a bad sign. <laughs> They're probably very small uh, and you may not be getting the best deal, all right? So uh, if we tell you, oh, I've never heard of that company before, they, that might give you a little bit of pause. <laughs> We've been doing this for a couple of years, so uh, we probably should know about your company already, okay? So anyway, uh, hopefully we already have a Schedule A for your company and we can help you out and put that together real quick. So now we're back on our prospect page. So on the prospect page, we do have a very basic CRM, um, and it's actually pretty nice to use. Um, there's a few things, obviously, we're gonna be adding in with our next uh, iteration, but um, it's nice. You can click on a prospect, and um, it'll open up something. And by the way, this is all made for mobile. It actually it actually looks better on a mobile phone than it does on a desktop, in my, in my personal humble opinion, you know, since I'm the one that created it. Uh, but what you can do, basically, is you can click on a prospect, and then it's gonna have their information, so you can put, you know, contact name is Bill, you know, and their phone number is 112, like this. And we can put all kinds of information in here. Let's say this was a referral. We can change the stage to quoted. We can add an action step with a, a calendar here. Uh, or we could go over here, we could add a note. Spoke to Bill. He wants to move forward, but needs to talk to Susan. We can add that, so we can add a note. So it's got some basic CRM functionality. It's pretty nice. I mean, it comes with it for free. So it's, you know, you're paying $29, you might as well use it. Um, again, the next version we roll out is gonna be, you know, even better, so it's, it's pretty cool. So then over here, you have whatever statements you've already done. I could just, this is the one I did a minute ago, and so I could click on it, and it would just take me right to that statement again. Um, and so we could do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new prospect. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to do what I call the quick analysis, all right? The, the quick analysis or the instant quote, right? The, the whole idea of the instant quote tool is you can provide an instant quote. What does that mean, an instant quote? Well, I'm about to show you. So we do this uh, for you. Um, if you are with a processing company and you're looking to set up a tool, we can actually set up a custom branded tool for you and make sure that you have only the programs in there that you want. Um, and so you can do it that way, but uh, yeah, we can set all this up for you if you're just using it to do quotes. How is tier pricing handled in the tool? So the way tier pricing is handled right now is that we just automatically convert it to Interchange Plus. Our algorithm looks at, okay, this merchant type is paying this amount of money on tier pricing. Here's what that means if they were paying tier, if they were paying Interchange Plus, here's what that would be. So we just automatically convert everything to Interchange Plus so it's an apples to apples comparison. Um, our next iteration will have a tier pricing kind of structure to it that you can use if you'd like. Tier pricing is a little tough because every processor looks at it a little bit differently. So even though you might say this transaction is qualified, well, another processor might say that same transaction is mid-qualified. So we've been struggling with like, how do we want to represent tier pricing? Because we have all these, we represent all these different processors that use our tool. So, um, 
Is it possible to integrate with Zapier? Um, absolutely. If we have, if we're building like a custom solution for you, uh, again, other that's a really that's I'm glad really glad you brought that up actually that's something we'll look at doing in the next version for the individual users definitely if you have you know our branded solution which has a little bit of an upfront cost to get going and you need to have several users to make it worth your while um, but there we've done all kinds of integrations we've done custom integrations we've done Zapier we've done all kinds of crazy stuff with that so uh, yeah we can do that stuff it's just custom because I mean keep in mind you know for everybody on the call I mean in case you don't realize I mean this tool we built all of this in house I personally coded probably 90 percent of this the first time don't worry my lead developer redid all my work <laughs> but uh, you know it's all been redone as to make it more stable and more accurate and all that stuff but uh, you know we built this thing hundred percent in house this is not like some you know outsourced thing uh, I have a developer named Jack who's on on our team who basically did this thing so uh, you know as a result if we need to do an integration or whatever it's not a question of can we do it it's a question of how, how expensive is it going to be and how long is it going to take <laughs> and how many people want it so anyway so to answer your question Antonio uh, definitely right now we could do that if you did a branded version and you can email us about that to get some pricing um, and you know if you and 17 other people tell me they want to integrate with Zapier then we'll make sure the next version integrates with Zapier so okay uh, so let's start this out so we're going to click down here on the prospects and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick our business type now you can go up here and you can search by you know anything you want here's all the retail that we have you can search by you know I want quick service restaurants so I search quick there it is or you know we just leave that blank and we have all of them so there's only 22 business types that are represented and that's intentionally um, you have to understand that in order for our tool to work we have to have a lot of data to back it up um, and so what that means is we had to put a bunch of statements thousands of statement records into our database and that's very time consuming and very expensive to do and so the idea is we wanted to cover the core business types and make sure we had lots of statements for each one so that our results our statistical results were accurate um, and so these are the business types that we support there are some we do not support we don't support tier one and tier two or I'm sorry we don't support tier two tier three merchants which are like business to business transactions where you can get a lower rate uh, if it's tier two tier three with extra data um, you know, so there's a few business types like that, but what our goal was for the rep who's out in the field selling or on the phone selling 85, 90% of the, the deals are going to be uh, handled with one of these uh, business types here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out a quick service restaurant here. We're going to say it's a pizza shop. Like we were looking at earlier, give it a business name here. So, you know, Tony's pizza shack and I've already got some other data kind of preloaded. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, the stage is, let's say contacted. So when I click save and quote, it's going to do two things. First, it's going to save a prospect into our CRM. And then it's also going to take me right into the process of creating a quote for that prospect. Here we are. So we're going to go ahead and name it. So you can name it whatever you want. This is just a text field. I usually like to name mine the month and year of the statement. So let's say this is our January 2018 statement. Okay. Then we're going to go over here and put in, uh, let's say, $20,000 in volume. Uh, let's say that they do a thousand dollars in American Express, a thousand dollars in pin debit. We're gonna leave. So, so let me break this down for a second. So, imagine you're walking into a merchant, and you're talking to them, and you want to get them interested right now. Okay, so you're not gonna probably ask them for their statement. That's a little bit tough to do when you first walk in. So, instead, you might say something like, uh, "Mr. Jones, you know, after you do a little small talk and introduce and get a little rapport." You say, Mr. Jones, it's a pleasure meeting you. I really appreciate you taking the time. I've actually got a tool on my phone where I've got all my pricing and, and all kinds of stuff loaded in with this big database. And I can actually take literally a minute, like one, like 60 seconds, and I can give you a PDF proposal that shows roughly how much we could probably save you on your merchant services. I don't need to see your statement or anything. You're just going to need to have a little data uh, so that I can do this. Do you have one more minute so I could just email you this thing real quick? It's free. I'll just email you the PDF so you can take a look at it. Usually they'll say yes to that. Whereas they'll usually say no to, you know, can I see your statement? So it's nice to have something that they'll say yes to. So then when they, they say sure, then you say, okay, well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Question number one, do you know last month roughly how much you did in total processing volume from, you know, pin debit to, you know, Visa MasterCard Discover to American Express? And what did you do in total electronic transactions last month? And they're like, ah, probably about 20,000. Okay, cool. Next question, do you take American Express? Yeah, we probably did about $1,000 last month, okay? Uh, what about pin debit? Yeah, we probably did about $1,000 in that as well last month. You're like, okay. So just to be clear what we have here, we have a merchant that did 18000 not twenty, but 18000 in Visa MasterCard Discover volume. 
And that's because they did 20,000 total, but they did 1,000 in American Express and 1,000 in Pin Debit. So our system backs that out of the 20, so we know they did 18,000 in Visa, MasterCard, Discover. Then we have the average ticket size. Well, the average ticket size, we preload this. So in other words, based on all the other quick service restaurants in our database, then $21.59 is the average, average ticket size, right, for all those business types. Now, the last field is the total current fees. And so you might ask them, hey, do you know what you paid roughly to process that 20000 You might ask them that, but you might not. You might say, eh, if I ask that, they're probably going to know that I'm trying to give them a quote. I think I'm going to stay away from that, you know. Okay, that's fine. It's optional. Now, if you don't put that, we have no idea how much you can save them, but we do know how much you would charge them. So you can go ahead and click Create. And you can see here, it's going to show you, okay, the, this is this merchant qualifies for that high volume. Remember, we had over 10,000 in volume was high volume. So we're going to put them at 20 basis points and six cents. You're going to make $40 in residual off of them a month, and you're going to get a $200 bonus with this particular program. Now, again, if you're using the tool and you've got multiple processors and different things you sell, you're normally going to have five or six or seven different programs here. And this is a way to, again, help you to make the most informed decision because, Many times, you know, you're selling a standard merchant and you want to you want to sell them and you've got two different processors that have basically the exact same program. And so uh, they have the pretty much the same offer. And how are you going to make that decision? Well, obviously, you want to make the decision based on where you're going to make the most money. Right. Well, how do you know where you're going to make the most money? Schedule A's are difficult to understand even when you're looking at them for a while. What about when you're standing in front of the merchant? How do you make that decision? Use our tool. And he'll tell you right here, oh, well, you're going to make 60 bucks a month with this company. You're going to make 40 with this one. And you know, we already have all that in there. So once we have everything preloaded, it's really easy for you to go through and make the right decision. So now we're going to click present. And when we click present, you're going to see a full you know, proposal here. Okay. Now this proposal, I want you to notice a few things. So first of all, notice this number right here. This is the Visa MasterCard Discover Interchange. Remember I said it was 18,000 in volume? So there it is. Now you say, well, James, I didn't enter the Visa MasterCard Discover Interchange. Where did I get that? Well, that's why we have our algorithm. And our algorithm, what it does is it runs in the background. It does like 30,000 calculations on average to, to get this. And so it's looking at thousands of statements. It is looking at this stuff. It's building an interchange table from scratch, which I'll show you a little later. So this is not just a guess. It's a very educated guess like we talked about at the beginning of the event, all right? So then you can see some other things here. You can see the pricing, the Visa MasterCard Discover pricing that we talked about, six cents and 20 basis points. You can also see the Amex fees, all right? $8.50 there, because it's very little volume. Here's the Amex Op Blue. So for a quick service restaurant with an average ticket size of $21, their uh, rate on American Express is 10 cents and 1.6%. That's the Amex Op Blue rate. So we take care of going into the table and finding the correct rate. Debit fees, right? Here's the debit network fees. So if you're running pin debit, here's what pin debit would, would cost, right? All right. Um, and so you can kind of see all this stuff here. Down here, you have the other fees. So here's our pin debit fee, our PCI fee, our settlement fee. We have all this in here, okay? Now, one thing I forgot to do, actually, let me go back here for one second and go to the program. I didn't add any custom fields into the program, so let's do that real quick because I just realized we don't have our technology fee on there for um, for the Clover. So let's look at this high volume program right here, and if I click on this little icon over here, it looks like a table. I can also add some custom fields, so let's do a new custom field. And this is where you could add, you know, gateway fees, leases, uh, you know, technology fees, um, whatever you could think of. So you can do a monthly fee, you can do an annual fee, you can do a Visa MasterCard Discover per item fee, you can add basis points to Visa MasterCard Discover, the same for Amex, Pen Debit, you can add a sales bonus, a one-time fee, uh, or even a consumer surcharge, which is only going to charge credit cards, not check cards. Um, and so you can add all those different things. So let's go ahead and add the software fee and maybe I'll call this the Clover software fee. And so let's put the amount in here. Let's say it's $39, right? Now, let's say you actually don't get any rev share on that. So, you know, there's there's actually a $39 cost. You're just passing through your cost from Clover uh, and the processor to the merchant, hypothetically. So when we save that, we now see we're going to have, oh, look at that. Here's another, you know, here's our, our Clover software fee, okay? 
So let's go back to our prospects here, and I'm gonna just run through this process one more time real quick so you can see how fast it actually is in real time and see how these fees show up. So I hit my plus icon, choose a quick service restaurant, put the information in here for Tony's Pizza Shack, save and quote. And we'll call this a January 2018, 20,000 in volume, 1,000 in Amex, 1,000 in pin debit, and we don't we didn't put the total current fees. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the total current fees in this time. So let's say that they're actually paying 700 and you know, I don't know, 720 dollars. Let's say. So we're going to click on create. So now you're going to notice a couple things. You're going to notice that here we have our same high volume pricing. Our residual is still 40 basis points because it's the same pricing. But it also now shows our savings, monthly savings of 191. So this is another variable, right? If you're looking at which program do you want to put the merchant on, you want to know how much am I going to make, but you also want to know how much is the merchant going to save. So now that we put the total fees in, now it's going to show us our savings. When we click present, here we go. Shows our annual three-year savings and monthly savings here. And now if we scroll down, guess what we're going to see down here in the other fees section? We're going to see that monthly $39 fee. Now let's say that we wanna change some pricing. By the way, keep typing your questions out. I'm gonna answer them in one second. Let's say that we wanna change the pricing a little bit. So we, we created our program, but we're like, yeah, but this merchant, I think we can do 30 basis points. Just click on the pricing wizard up here. And you can just go right here and just change it to 30 basis points. You can actually go through and just change everything on here. Okay, and so we're gonna go save. <coughs> okay. So now it changed our monthly savings down a little bit. See that? And it put our fees up a little bit. Okay. And again, now we just hit PDF and we have a beautiful PDF proposal that's got the business owner's name, your contact information. You can go up here and download it or if you're on your phone, you can click the share icon and you can email it right to the merchant. Um, and it's got all the information on here that you would want. So that is the quick analysis or the instant analysis. So let me answer some questions and then we're gonna move on to the side by side for the last part here. So um, iOS and Android supported. Uh, yes, Adam, I would actually go so far as to say iOS and Android preferred. It actually works better on a phone, in my opinion, than desktop, it looks better. It works either way, but do keep in mind it's a web application. So it's not like you need to go to the App Store or Google Play to download it. Um, you just go open up Safari or you know Google Chrome or Firefox, whatever browser you're using, go to instantquotetool.com and it's automatically gonna change its appearance to fit your phone screen or your tablet screen. Um, and also iPad as well. We, so, so let me explain this. Like we use something called bootstrap, which basically means there's a grid. And so we have changed our design. And, and so one of the things that took us so long to design this tool is that we didn't just create one design. Actually, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the side by side comparison. So let's say you had a statement and you wanted to do a side by side comparison. You click on side by side, you click on create side by side. Now that seems simple enough but I want you to check this out. So let me go down to, for instance, the uh, pass-through form here, okay? So again, I'm gonna go through this in a second. I just wanna show you something. So this is what it looks like on a desktop. Now, as I come down a little bit, I'm gonna get to one of these, what they call a breakpoint, okay? And now it looks like this, because now we're on a tablet. So it looks a little bit different on a tablet, okay? I go down a little more. Now I'm on a phone screen here. Let's go all the way down. So now I'm on a phone screen. You can look at this form, it looks totally different. Now it only has these two fields, you have to click the icon to get it to drop down. Because we're on a phone, we don't want you to have to scroll forever, you know? So it changes appearance based on the device. So it's a web application, and there's really no need for a, a, a native app on this particular one, um, and so that's how that works. Cost column is pure interchange, and access column is uh, let's see. Oh, oh, you're asking about, let me go back for one second here. Okay. So he's saying the cost column is pure interchange and access, uh, column is uh, the access fees. Yes. Yeah, so this is the cost column is interchange. And then this is the network, uh, access fees. Um, and th those two do not total up to this one over here because this one also has the markup in it as well. So this is the access fees, this is the interchange, and then this over here is access plus interchange plus markup.
Good question. Um, if building a team, is there custom pricing for the tool? Yes. So $29 a month is per user is the standard price. Obviously, if you get more users than that, we'll reduce the price. However, keep in mind, uh, the trade there's a little bit of a trade-off there because usually you're going to want us to do some kind of custom customization work if you're building a team to you know have a team management dashboard and other things like that. We have all that stuff, but it does cost a little bit of money for us to set it up. Not a lot, but we do charge a small setup fee to get everything going for you. And then after that, usually your your per you know uh, month fees are, are going to be down uh, pretty significantly there. So, all right. So let's go ahead and jump back in here, and I'll answer more questions here in just a minute. So now we are going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let me let me back up for one second and, and kind of give you – zoom out and do a big picture here for a second, okay? So when I am making a sale uh, just today uh, – what, Josh is here with me like an hour ago, hour and a half ago. I had somebody in here, didn't close the deal. I got uh, I got weak and uh, you know didn't push as hard as I could have to close the deal. Um, but anyway, um, you know I was in here, had a merchant come to my office, and I was talking to them. Now, when I gave them the proposal, I the thought honestly did not even cross my mind to do a side by side comparison. I never do side by side comparisons ever. I personally just think it's a total waste of time, and if any, the only thing it accomplishes usually is that it gets the merchant to look at every single line item and negotiate with you about everything, which is not exactly what I want. So I use the the one you're looking at right now. Now you're like, okay, what are the downsides or whatever? Well, there's a couple things. Okay, number one, certainly the Visa Mastercard Discover volume is not going to match their statement exactly. Okay. So if they look at that and they compare it to their statement, you know, it's not going to match exactly. I mean, are they going to do that? No. And even if they did, it doesn't matter. This is an average of what it's going to be. And the, tr the interchange costs are the same on all three. So it, just, it really doesn't matter. But, you know, it doesn't match exactly. So maybe that's a concern to your merchant or to you. Then, you know, you might want to do a side-by-side. -side. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, of course, the interchange. I mean, you know, your interchange, it's possible the interchange could be, I mean, it's, it's it definitely off a little bit, maybe just a few bucks, but it could be off a little bit there depending on if they're a unique business type or something and the interchange isn't 323.68, it's actually, you know, 345 or something and so you want to adjust that. That's fine, okay? Again, on average, our tool is going to be really accurate on average, and so you can just pitch this with confidence and close the deal. But if something doesn't look right, or for whatever reason you decide you want to do a side-by-side -side comparison, let me tell you what you need to do. Number one, you don't want to just create a side-by-side -side off of this proposal because these numbers are probably not accurate. They're probably not doing 20,000 in volume. That statement you have in your hand, they're probably doing 21,364 or whatever, right? So this would be only after you get the statement. You have to have the statement to do a side-by-side. -side. I mean, I think that kind of goes without saying, but you have to have a statement to do side-by-side. -side. So what you want to do is go back to the prospects. You don't need to create a new prospect or anything. You just click on the prospect you've already created, and we're not really creating anything new for them, um, but what we're doing is we're basically just going to add a new quote uh, to the prospect. We're going to basically add a new quote. So when you go here, we're going to click on this quote button over here to the right, and you can see we already have this one here at 20,000. Now we're going to add a new one by clicking on quote. And now it already knows the business type. And so now we're going to put this in here. And I'll call this the January side by side. So again, now we find out it's, you know, $21,359 or whatever. And it's actually, you know, $1,345.65. And then they do, you know, $1,643.20 in pin debit. Their average ticket size turned out to be 1985 and their total fees were actually 7, you know, 70186 or 87 or whatever. So there you go. So again, that's just random numbers, but this is how it would look. You know, you're actually putting the real numbers from the statement in this form. Now you click on create. Okay, now you're still going to go ahead and choose your program. Next. Click present. Except that now, before you go editing pricing and all this other stuff, go to the side-by-side -side and click on Create Side-by-Side. -side. So when you click Create Side-by-Side, -side, this is going to take you to a form. Now, this form, uh, honestly, some users get confused by it for a couple reasons. Number one, you need to make sure you understand what this is. This is their current pricing. This is their current pricing. This is what they're paying now. And then we're going to compare it to the program pricing that you've already put in. But it's important to understand this is what they're paying now. The reason it's confusing is because our system is so smart 
that it already guessed what they're currently paying. And so that'll throw people off like, wait a second, you know, how do you know they have $19.95 in monthly fees? And I mean, I'm, I actually have actually had quite a few users that have reached out to me and said like, wow, this, this thing is a little scary. Like, I don't understand. How did it guess? <laughs> I mean, I've had statements that were, that were almost identical. Like we literally guessed exactly what they're paying, not total, but literally the individual, like they were paying nineteen ninety five in monthly fees. They did have a thirty cent batch with twenty batches. Like it's very accurate, and so it can be a little bit disconcerting when you first look at it. But I mean, it's, there's nothing spooky about it. It's running off of like thousands of statements, and I mean, everybody prices pretty similar with stuff. So what we're doing is we're looking at this total fees over here of seven hundred one eighty seven. That's what you said their total fees were, and we're making sure that all the fees on this form add up to seven hundred one eighty seven. So the crazy thing is, even if you did nothing to this form, you just hit continue. It would do a side-by-side -side comparison based on what we're guessing their total fees are today. So it's pretty wild. But here's the really cool thing. The really cool thing is, as you change things on this form, it's going to change other things to make sure that it totals 70187. So once I click on a field, so let's say I look at the statement and I'm like 70 basis points. No, it's actually 60 basis points. Okay, so I change that to 60. When I hit tab, two things are going to happen. Number one, it's going to lock that field and our program is going to say, wait a second, don't change that 60 because they already changed it. And so we know that's what's actually on the statement. The second thing that's going to happen is our program is going to recognize, well, hold on. If you took them from 70 to 60, that's 10 basis points different. We have to make that up somewhere to make sure that the total fees add up to 70187. So look at our VMD per item fees and watch what happens when I hit tab automatically. Watch this. See that? It went from 10 cents to 12 cents. Now, why did it do that? Well, it did that. You notice it also changed our pass through a little bit too. What's happening is our tool is looking through all of the fees on there and it happens in a millisecond, but it's looking through all the fees and saying, okay, wait a second. We have, you know, four, you know, whatever it is, $17 in fees that are not accounted for where is the most statistically probable place that we can put those fees? And it says, well, we don't, you know, they didn't adjust the pride and fee yet. So let's assume the pride and fee is a little higher. And again, this worked. I mean, on the last one I was doing that pizza shop, they were at zero basis points and seven cents. And when I changed the basis points to zero and hit tab, it automatically put the pride and fee at seven cents. It knew what it was because it's a process of elimination, you know? So it's very smart. And the reason that's really nice is if you don't know how to read a statement yet, it's actually kind of nice to be able to just, you know, have it there and, uh, and be able to do stuff with it. So, okay, so we're going to leave that there. And so, you know, you can change all of this. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details, but this is a pretty lengthy form if you go through it all here, but it's nice because it's all in one kind of table. But this is where you can go and you could change your visa volume and transactions to match and all that um, and all the other fees and everything. So we're going to assume you did that. You then could go down to the pass through section and you could change it and you might say, well, their current interchange is actually 330. So you can see now it took our pride and fee back down to 10 cents, you know? Uh, and so, you know, because our interchange went up and so they marked up interchange probably. Maybe the network access brand usage fee is, you know, two and a half cents. So we're gonna go, we're gonna change that all the way across the board here. All right, and so we changed that. Uh, yeah, so we'll just leave it at that for now. So we're gonna hit continue. Now it's gonna take us to the interchange uh, calculation table. Now, again, this is one of those things where for most of you, I wouldn't even mess with it. I wouldn't do anything with it at all. I would just hit, I would just hit compare because <laughs> it's very complicated. Um, if you go through the advanced statement training, you're gonna understand it a lot more. But you know, one of the questions I get a lot from sales reps is, how do you calculate the interchange? I mean, that's a really hard thing to guess. And the first thing I say is, yeah, it is really hard to guess. It took me about six months to figure it out. Um, and so it is really hard to guess. But number one, you can't guess it as an individual person. We don't have the brain power to do it. We had to build a program. This is kind of funny. I'll give you an example of this. I, I vividly remember when I was building this the first time and I had built the, the algorithm that runs it. The very first time that I ever ran this algorithm, it, I'm not joking, it took 30 minutes to run to figure out what the interchange was. <laughs> 
And uh, so I had to get some professional developers involved to figure out how do we speed this up a little bit. <laughs> um, and then I remember the day I got it down below a minute, and I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. It's down below a minute. I mean, obviously, none of you are going to wait a minute for this thing to calculate. Um, it now runs in about one-third of a second. So, and it actually does probably 10 times as many calculations as the first one that I had in, in one third of a second. So that's pretty wild, huh? So anyway, so that's what it's doing. It's running a bunch of calculations and what it's doing is it's looking at all of these statements and it's pulling off of the statements to recreate the most statistically probable interchange table for this merchant. And I'll, I'll show you one little minor thing that, that I mean, it's, well, it's, it's massive, but I mean, you know, it's kind of complicated, so I'm not going to dwell on it. But, you know, one of my big pet peeves is, you know, there's other companies in the industry that will have some kind of tool and, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, we can predict your interchange. And all they do is they take the business type and they're like, we think their interchange is probably 1.8%. Well, that's just the stupidest thing ever. I mean, you know, interchange is dramatically influenced by the average ticket size. So, for instance, you put down, or we put down here that the average ticket size, I think, was like $21 or something like that, right? But if you look over here, you'll notice that the overall average is $21, but the individual interchange categories have their own um, average ticket size. So, for instance, CPS small ticket regulated. Again, I'm not going to dwell on this because I know it's complicated and we're running out of time, but this is an interchange category that only applies to... Uh, transactions that are less than $15. So clearly, it's not going to have an average ticket size of 21 for those. There's not going to be very many of them, but the ones that you do run are going to have an average ticket of $8.98. Then we could go all the way down further and see some like this one. This is a business level one TE rate one. Well, it has a rate of 2.5%. This is a business transaction, and the odds are that their average ticket is going to be $94.79. So our algorithm is literally saying, okay, you told us the average ticket is 21. We're going to look at all of the interchange categories, figure out how much revenue is there, figure out uh, you know, what the average ticket should be for that specific uh, interchange type. Then we're going to figure out the total fees, and I mean, it does a lot of work. So then it gives you these four boxes right here. Now, these four boxes are uh, really, honestly, it probably took me about a year to figure out these four boxes, which I know sounds crazy, but it took us a long time after we originally rolled it out to figure this out. But there are four basically groups of assumptions that create interchange. And again, most of you, I know some of you are watching this like, oh, this is so complicated. Please don't let that scare you away. Again, 99% of the time you don't even need to look at this, but I'm just showing you what the tool does. Some of you have what may be a statement analysis department you want to have using this. You can literally go in and make adjustments. So I might say, okay, their interchange right now is saying it should be 304.14 and their current interchange is 324. Well, Actually, though, when I look at it, I find out that their reward cards, they're running about 15% rewards cards. I can adjust this, and I can change rewards to 15% and hit adjust, and we're going to go from 304 to 317. So what happened there is our algorithm, you can see how quick it's running, our algorithm ran again in the background and said, hold on a second. You're telling me that there's more rewards cards. That means I need to rerun the interchange table and make all the adjustments and make all the other statistically probable changes. And now we know the interchange is probably 317.40. So this is not just a interchange predictor. It's also an interchange calculator. So it's really cool. And this is why you want to do that advanced statement training to really understand it better. I'm going to go ahead and click compare, present. And we have our side-by-side -side comparison now. That's going to show where all the savings is coming from, the you know interchange, the network fees, all this stuff here. We have our side by side of what they're paying now, what we would charge, uh, monthly fees. We just got it all broken down really, really nice. Okay, so um, before I answer questions and go ahead and type them out if you have a question, one last thing, real quick. So what you need to do right now is you need to go to instantquotetool.com if you've not done so already and do a couple things for me. Number one. Start your free trial by clicking start my free trial. Start that up. And then once you do that, next thing you need to do is email support at instantquotetool.com. Support at instantquotetool.com and say, hey, here's the companies I sell for. Can you add these in? And we'll add those in for you. Or you can go to the programs and do it yourself. But again, if you get stuck, let us know. We're glad to help. Okay. Then the third thing I'd love for you to do is please give me some feedback. You can email me directly, james at ccsalespro.com. Maybe you saw something today that you thought, oh, boy, I wish it had this. I wish it had that. 
Um, and, you know, I can look at that and maybe we can add that as a feature in the next version of it. And I'd love to get your feedback. I, I actually would really appreciate it. It'd be a personal favor to me if you could give me some feedback on the tool because I want to make sure it's user friendly. Obviously, I really want this tool to become the go to, you know, tool in the industry. I mean, I want all of our competitors to just not be able to find a customer in a few years because I want our tool to be so good and to be exactly what the sales rep wants and needs that nobody's using anybody else um, because I really think this tool can be that good. Um, but I need your help to get there to understand and get some feedback about other things we need to add in. Um, I would like to really thank you all lastly for your time today. I'm, I'm only two minutes over, so we did pretty good, but thank you so much. I mean, I know how busy you all are. I know how busy I am. Like taking an hour out of your day is a pretty big deal, and I really, really appreciate that. Please do take the next step. Sign up for the trial. I promise you, you're going to get $29 a month in value out of this thing. Believe me. Even if you just go through the training and do some proposals uh, once, you know, maybe a couple times a month and help you close an extra deal, it's going to pay for itself. So go there and try it out. Give me your feedback. I would really personally appreciate that. Uh, my name is James Shepard. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you have an awesome weekend.